this diagram is sometimes useful in helping students get an idea of what needs to be done to convert between various units for a given substance. You'll notice here that Mole Island is a different shape, which means somehow it's special compared to the other three islands on the left. And that's because the mole is the unit for amount of substance in the SI system. And so if we want to convert between, for example, the top island here, mass, and the bottom island, particles, that is atoms or molecules, it's often useful to go from mass to particles via the mole. When we use this diagram, each of these bridges, there's one bridge there, there's a bridge right there, and then there's a bridge between particles and moles. Each of those bridges represents a conversion factor. And we'll do a problem here or two in a minute to hopefully illustrate some of these ideas. To convert between mass, which is the top island, and moles, we have the relationship that one mole of any substance is equal to the molar mass in grams. If we want to convert between volume of gases at STP, which is this middle island, and moles, we have the relationship that one mole of any gas at STP takes up 22.4 liters of space, or one mole of any gas at STP takes up 22.4 cubic decimeters because a liter is a cubic decimeter. The last bridge, the one down here at the bottom, will allow us to convert between particles, that is atoms of copper, say, or molecules of water, and moles of that substance. And that relationship is right down here in the lower right. One mole of any substance is 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms, or 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd molecules or formula units depending on what type of substance you're converting. Let's do a couple of examples. What mass is 6.29 times 10 to the 24th molecules of aluminum sulfate? Now technically because aluminum sulfate is an ionic substance we really should use the term formula unit instead of molecule but I've taken the liberty of using the word molecule because more students understand that term and in essence the idea is similar to that of a formula unit but if you are one of those who likes detail whenever you have an ionic substance you should really use the term formula unit not molecule okay so we want to figure out how much mass this number of molecules is. So on our little island diagram here, I apologize that it's a little bit small, but I want to make sure that we have enough room to fit everything else. We're going to start right here at particles, and that's because we know how many molecules we have. So we're going to start down here and travel first to Mole Island, and then we're going to travel up to Mass Island, because that's what we're asked to calculate which means we're going to write down the quantity that we're given. And because we have two bridges to cross on our island diagram, that means we're going to need two conversion factors. First, if you look at our island diagram, we're starting at Particle Island, and we first need to go to Mole Island, which means we need to use this conversion factor right here. It's very small, but it says one mole is equal to 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd particles. There are two bits to that equivalent statement, and in our conversion factor, we have two spots, a numerator and a denominator. I've put the 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd molecules in the denominator because that will allow me to cancel the molecule unit. We have now successfully traveled to Mole Island, and now we want to go from Mole Island up to Mass Island. And if we look at the conversion factor that is related to that transition, it says one mole is equal to the molar mass in grams. So I have to put one mole someplace, and I have to put the molar mass in the other part 
of this conversion factor. Clearly, the one mole needs to go in the denominator. The mole units will cancel. And then in the numerator, we need to put the molar mass. Well, to put the molar mass, we need to know what the formula is for aluminum sulfate. So let's go ahead and do that. Aluminum is a 3 plus when it becomes an ion. The sulfate ion is SO4 2 minus. Therefore, aluminum sulfate has this formula. And if you look up those molar masses on the periodic table, you'll find that the molar mass is 342.3 grams. From this point, it's a matter of typing this correctly into our calculator using our exponent key and rounding to the correct number of significant figures. Let's try another one. At STP, standard temperature and pressure, how many grams is 87.3 cubic decimeters of nitrogen gas? So here's our little model of our island diagram. This time we're going to start at volume island, which is right there, and we're going to end up at mass island. So our little path will go to the right to mole island and then up to mass island. So let's write down the quantity we're given. I changed cubic decimeters to liters for no particular reason, probably because it just takes less time to write. We're going to cross two bridges, which means we need two conversion factors. Let's start at volume island. When we cross this bridge, we need to say one mole is equal to 22.4 liters. The 22.4 liters has to go in the denominator, and the mole goes in the numerator so that the liter units cancel. One on the top, one on the bottom. We've now traveled to Mole Island, and now we need to go up to Mass Island, and then we'll be done. We're going to put one mole in the denominator so that it will cancel. And here again, we happen to need the molar mass of nitrogen gas. Well, now it's time to remember that nitrogen gas is diatomic. So its molar mass is going to be N two times over. So the molar mass of N on the periodic table is 14. So we've doubled that to 28. And we've gone to our calculator. We've typed in 87.3 divided by 22.4 times 28. And we've rounded to three significant figures. 109 because we have three significant figures in this quantity that we were given to start with.